morning and welcome. Now last week you will have seen me make my Amiga 600 be USB powered, USB-C powered. So today I'm going to increase the portability of this Amiga 600 by giving it the ability to connect to any HDMI screen in an Apple Mac mini fashion. Except this is much better because firstly it's an Amiga and secondly it's got a built-in keyboard. And I'm going to do that with the RGB to HDMI. PCBWay are an electronics PCB prototyping company who deal with many different types of PCBs, such as flexible, rigid flex, multi-layer and HDI types. You can choose from many different types of PCBs, whether it's a standard, inexpensive for simple projects or an advanced complex PCB for your more high precision electronics projects. They are a one-stop solution since they also deal with 3D printing, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining. Your personal projects can be shared on their website and there is a PCB projects on the week section with many videos. It's the first time I've used this. Thank you amigastore.eu. This is where I bought this from. So here I have an RGB to HDMI for the Amiga 600 and this basically goes onto the Denise chip which is the graphics chip and allows it to go through the Raspberry Pi here which has an HDMI output. So this is basically a similar thing to the Indivision AGA MK3 which I did and I'll link that in the description below. I got that from my 1200 tower but this I just wanted to try this out something different for this. I've not had any experience with this whatsoever. So it comes with a micro SD card here which is an option when you order from amigastore.eu and uh, as far as I know all I need to do is just insert the um, SD card in there. It's already got everything on there. So I want to. I need to install this into my Amiga 600. Please don't say I have to make another hole. I think I do, don't I? To have another switch here. <laughs> oh my goodness. But what I did after filming last week's video is actually extend the cables here. So the. So the minus 12 volt line and this have been extended so that I can just comfortably do this. Now the Denise chip is this one here. Now all we need to do is just the insert this on here. Before we do that, now first what we need to do before anything else, this is a really pretty little SD card. You know why? Because it's my kind of colors. <laughs> it's like ocean blue. So this should have everything that's needed already on this. Now, according to the images and everything there, it goes in this way. And there we go. Easy as that. Well, not just yet. I need to put this on first. <laughs> oh dear. Got to be very careful here where I, put, where I place this because I've just put that button in the, the power switch. Install this carefully on the Denise chip. These don't keep popping up like that. I don't want the same thing as that keyboard adapter thing happening. Okay. Oh, you've got to actually press down really hard. Okay, it's on securely. <laughs> Please don't pop up. Now, that's on, this is on. I'm just a little funny about this, um, this shielding here. I don't want it to short something on that board. Is there any danger of that? Oh, I'm so pedantic with everything. This will actually keep and hold and it's so more solid than it was just like this um, Pico or DC ATX power. Right, so I keep thinking that's Nokia. 
Now it's the HDMI adapter that's the um, it's a little stiff. It's one thing which bugs me about it. Oh, why'd you have to be that way? <laughs> it really has to be that way, doesn't it? I mean, for now, let's just do that so we can test the darn thing. No. I'll connect this, but I'll leave it dangling out there. Because I wanna... Do I really kind of need it urgently or keep needing to do something? If I keep needing to use it, then I'll mount it, otherwise no. Truth. Okay, that's a good sign. But that comes on. Oh, nice. Okay, hold on. I think I know what this might be. It's the fact that I've got this set to um, 4x3. That's it. I set this to 16x9 because um, the Indivision AGA, which I have in the other one, I have to set the screen to 4x3 for this to, you know, fully fit up. But that's all right, you know, as long as it's set to... I'd rather it be like this because most screens are set to 16x3. Um, three. 16x3? Three. I'm at 16x9. Where is that coffee? I think I need it. Obviously there's going to be no sound coming through this. So, as far as I know, it's like the Indivision. Do I really need to put that switch out on there? Okay, not having um, sound just doing my head in, so... I've connected my Creative Travel sound speakers to this and... Floppy drive has a really grating sound. I think I need to um, grease the worm wheel and everything. There we go. <laughs> I don't have a joystick plugged in. DJ Brain Crack. My brother and I actually always liked this track and a couple of others on this. So who is DJ Braincrack? Who are you? Right, I want to sort this disk drive out. This is bugging me. It's making a really grating loud noise and it should be smooth. So let's get that silicone grease. Okay, first. Let's grease that worm wheel. Okay, 
you know what? I'm gonna have a game of this. It's just tempting me too much. I could get my trusty zipstick and I cannot resist game on this. <laughs> I used to play this so much when I was little. I think I know all the moves by heart. Do you know when you were small, you you kind of, back then, you, I mean these games are hard, right? They're not easy. But back then, you'd persevere, you'd be stubborn. I think we were more stubborn back then. You'd not leave a game alone until you got past that certain point. And that's what made you learn it by heart like this. Oh my god, I used to love this game. I, I just makes me think of the time after school. I just jump straight. <laughs> Go into my brother's room and jump straight onto the Amiga. And play this. It'd be like sunny outside or something like this. Sometimes I'd bring a friend home and she'd, she'd play along with me. But yeah, I used to play this a lot. You get to know the patterns of absolutely everything. come here. This. I can't believe I got past that level in one go. I used to find this uh, eerie and I know those field mice come at exactly the time when you touch that tree stump thing, whatever. I got Prepper into the zone. <laughs> I didn't mean for this to turn into a nostalgia time. I just literally got into the zone. Oh for goodness sake. That's the first time I, that's the first I've actually died in this in this game. How? I used to I think I got properly Do you know that sometimes it's funny, right? You, I mean, it's like a musical instrument. Yeah, you don't play it for a while and then you get really rusty at it. Sometimes you even forget songs. But sometimes, right, in certain things, if you haven't done something for a while, like I haven't played this game since, I don't know how long, years, you know, that you get back to it and somehow you're better than you ever were without even trying. DJ Brainbug, what's your name? Brain Crack. Who are you? Good music. <laughs> this is my childhood. Oh no! Oh no, the time's not rough, for goodness sake. Alright, anyway, you get, you get the point. The RGB to HDMI works really well, right? If it's, if it's kept me entertained for that long, it works perfectly and I can take this Amiga anywhere and um, play it and play whatever games I want. One thing I like about this um, kickstart switcher, you, when you hold down reset for a while it changes. It's by 
Kara Fraser, but he, he was only making like a limited run of them. And then, you know, he just stopped making them. I don't know what he's, what he's doing now. The guy who made um, the Flash Floppy for the Gotek. So I don't know what he's doing now. But yeah, can you see it's got 3.1 ROM now. So it's got multi-ROM. I think it's 2.0, 1.3. Well, it was 1.2 and then 1.3. And then 3.1. And something else. It goes all the way back. Maybe it's just four, I don't know. Yeah, it's gone all the way back to the beginning. Anyway, so RGB2 HDMI works really well. And this Amiga, so far, works really well. But I want to know what's getting warm. I think it's those square resistors on the um, Pico PSU. Can I just call it a Pico PSU? I know it's not Pico, right? Because it's not Pico branded. It's like calling a personal stereo a Walkman. But it's so much easier than saying DC to DC ATX power supply. I just want to call it a Pico. Oh my god, I love this. The power. <laughs> it's just so much easier. It already feels... It's amazing how much difference it makes. One thing that is not so um, portable about this is the sound. It's a shame the sound doesn't go through the HDMI. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to do that or not. Let's be careful here. I don't know if there's a way to do that or not if the Raspberry Pi has an input jack that does that or not. I have no idea. If anybody knows if it's possible or not, let me know please. Also, I have one more thing to add to this Amiga 600 in order to make it portable. Well, to be honest, this next thing doesn't actually make it portable as so much it actually gives it some oomph, yeah? Now, I will keep that a surprise until next time, yeah? <laughs> and uh, for the few of you who have been badgering me for the past few years, you'll be pleasantly surprised. I'll let you play the guessing game until next time. <laughs> Adios! A very special thank you to my top tier patrons. Rich Garbutt, Axel Dominator, Jason Marison, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak and Monochrom Minako. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. <laughs>